Hi there, so this video is going to review some of the new features in iOS 5, which is a new update to the iPad operating system. These are features that SLPs might be interested in knowing about. There's a couple that just have to do with how you touch the iPad or how you interact with it in uh, gestures. Um, first of all, you can go like this and it brings down any current notifications you have. Those are notifications you might have set as push notifications in an app. Um, you can always indicate, stay up there my friend, um, you can always indicate what you want notifications through settings um, when you go to notifications. These are apps that um, I'm using in Notification Center currently and you can set something to give you notifications so if you wanted Apple Store to send you a banner um, when something new happens you can turn that on. Okay, so you want to kind of use those selectively and figure out what notifications you want, but they're particularly helpful for the calendar feature um, that you can want to set alerts on a particular um, event that you have going on. Um, you can edit it and make sure that you set um, an alert, and that will come up in the notification center. So that's something that's uh, helpful for you to know about now and a change. Um, a couple of the other features have to do with um, multi-touch multi gestures, so I'm actually going to take the iPad and hold it down just so you can see the screen because it's hard to do these from above um, or from um, the side. So if you now push up with four fingers, that brings up the multitasking toolbar. Uh, if you push down, it dismisses it. We were always able to access that by a double click on the home button before, but now we have this. Um, other feature and we also can now move between active apps with that same gesture so four fingers um, will let us move uh, between apps so that just move between Safari and the calendar and back okay and for between whatever active apps you have open so that's pretty helpful to know about so, hang on one second, I reposition. So also it's helpful to notice that Safari got an, a nice update and it now has tabs for you. So instead of having to switch between pages in that sort of wonky manner it did before where you had to switch between whatever pages you had open and it made this big sweeping gesture, um, right now if you want you can just have tabs available so we can see that I have the social thinking page open and the speech techie Facebook page open if I want to open another tab I can just do um, that search for whatever I want or enter in the new address <clears throat> and I'll have that open as a tab the other piece that's um, pretty nice in Safari at this time is if you want to save something for reading at a later time um, and I'm open to one entry on my blog here, you can now save that to a reading list. So I just did use the action button and I can go add to reading list and then it's going to be available here in this reading list. Um, that's great because you can save things you want to read later and also because um, you can access those items in the reading list when your uh, iPad is not connected to the internet. So that's pretty helpful. So those are some advances in Safari. The other piece that's nice in Safari now is see how this little there's a little button with the URL that says Reader. And when I tap that now, it gives me a distraction-free version of the page that I was on. So Reader will only pop up in the kind of pages like blogs or um, newspaper entries that would you know make sense to um, view this way. But it's a nice feature. Um, for students who need to have sort of a clean thing to be reading rather than a very distracting web page. So also in terms of gestures, we just returning to the idea of gestures, there's a new piece in settings under general and they've expanded the accessibility options. So if you go to accessibility, you can now turn on what's called assistive touch. So when you turn on assistive touch, that brings up a little black square in the bottom right corner. 
and that allows you to bring up different gestures rather than having a client shake the iPad. You can click on device and then tap shake and it will work the same as the shake gesture. That accessibility, um, these new accessibility options you should definitely explore. You can actually add your own gestures. Um, it would be a whole other video to be talking about those. But um, now that brings this box back to the corner. Um, and if you want to ever turn those off, it's just in settings and you can turn off assistive touch and uh, return things back to the way they were. So also um, helpful and new is the uh, Reminders app. We can see here there's a new app. It's not something that um, you have to download. It comes with the operating system. And um, it allows you to make a checklist and check off items as you do them. Um, I'm going to point out that on the right here that says iCloud. iCloud I'll talk about it in a second, but it's the uh, service from Apple that allows you to sync lots of things between your devices, including apps, music, um, information on your calendar, contacts, things like that, and including this checklist. So if I want to add a new um, reminders list, I can tap on edit here and create new list and I'll create one for I'm going to call it home and say done. Now I've got this home list and if I want to add an item to it I say clean porch I then can add details about whether I want it to remind me on a particular day. It will send me a notification or an alert. Um, I can add more details to it like a note. And now that this is in the home list in iCloud, that will appear also on my iPhone in the Reminders app that's in my iPhone. Um, and that's pretty helpful. So. Back to iCloud. Um, what iCloud allows you to do is um, it syncs all of these items across your devices that you have that are Apple devices. So when you up update, you'll be setting up um, an account with iCloud, which is free, and it syncs mail, contacts, calendars, the reminders. It can sync your bookmarks if you want. It does sync your notes. Um, which is definitely very helpful, the, no, any notes you take in the notes app, um, and items like that. It also will, iCloud allows you to um, use automatic downloads for your music, apps, and books, so that any device you have, if you want, when you buy an app on your iPad, for it to show up on another iPad, you can turn on automatic downloads, and that will happen. Um, that's not something I'm really doing right now, but it's definitely something I might think about in the future. Um, let's go here to Safari again. I just want to show one feature about the keyboard. So notice I brought up the keyboard here. One thing that's new is that you can... Oops. I'm holding down the keyboard um, button. You can split the keyboard like that. Um, and that might be helpful for some people that type that way. I think the disadvantage is the keys are much smaller. So uh, to put it back, you just hold it down again, and you say dock and merge. Um, you can also uh, just undock the keyboard. Um, if I'm holding down here, say undock. Keyboard's in the middle of the screen. That might be helpful for you in some situations. I'm going back to dock it. Let's see, what else? I think the last thing I'm just going to mention is that um, I'm going to bring up the multitasking bar. If you sweep it over, you get some controls here. Um, one of the things that is available now is AirPlay uh, mirroring. So if I were to click on Apple TV and put on mirroring, I do have an Apple TV actually, 
um, I'll be able to see everything that's on my iPad screen on the TV. So that's kind of helpful for just playing around or watching movies at home, but I think the school implication for that is it could be threatening to um, interactive whiteboards, which I don't mind at all, actually, that that's happening. Um, you know, an iPad is $500 and an Apple TV is $100 and um, an LCD projector is, you know, four. So that's like $1,000 to basically have an interactive screen in your classroom, whereas um, interactive whiteboards tend to cost $4,000. So um, I think that's an interesting um, piece that um, might help iPads in a school setting and, and hurt interactive whiteboards. But that's just a, uh, a few things on... Um, on this update that you should check out and get to know. Uh, don't freak out about the changes. You just, they seem weird at first, but a lot of them are going to be helpful to you. To update your device so that it has uh, iOS 5, you can check the link in my post here. Um, I have some information about all of this that you can digest a little bit more slowly. So that's it. Hopefully that was helpful. Thanks.